let's uh let's break it down okay right here first things first a big change from where we are now in computers to where we're going to be very shortly where we are now because microsoft's taking pre-orders for this stuff now so that it can ship this year uh, in like a month or so what they're doing is some computers will have discrete hardware that they'll be you'll be able to install this is a new kind of expansion that we haven't had in consumer pcs before it's hardware that's dedicated to letting ai do its thing faster without occupying the gaming hardware that you have in your computer it's, it's called an npu neural processing unit so there are neural processing units out there that are relatively cheap. They don't work particularly well, but they're better than having nothing, and they go for as little as 30 bucks. Go up to 100, 200, and you get stuff more in, line, in the line of this. And in the future, we're not going to be buying computers and then adding this component to it. Starting with the Copilot Plus PC, the Surface stuff from Microsoft, they're going to be putting the AI stuff directly on the chip. And Apple's doing stuff like this too. So if you own a, if you buy a, a, an upcoming new Apple computer or an upcoming new iPad, it'll have the same kind of AI capabilities on it, that hardware to make it go be, to make AI work better. Their, Microsoft is doing the same thing. They just happen to not be using the same kind of hardware that they're using now. You know, right now, uh, we're using x86 stuff. We're using the kind of hardware that's been in existence since the 70s, late early 80s, when the original x86, when the original 8086 came out. It's basically the same architecture with a lot of extensions on top of it. This is a different architecture. So it means that some stuff isn't going to work the way we want. Some stuff isn't going to work at all. But it's also a more efficient platform. And it remains to be seen how that's going to play out between their ARM architecture and the PC stuff that we have today. In theory, they'll be able to make our PCs do all this too. Okay, and here they're promoting recall. And what they're showing is that timeline that, well, they're hinting towards that right now. When it takes a screenshot, it's interpreting what that screenshot is. And then when you type in search, it's going through that history, that backlog of screenshots, and it's going to find the images that makes the most sense. And it's So that's what they showed at first, the history. You can type in, what did I say to this person in Discord three days ago? And it can tell you. Or, I remember that I was working on this piece of data, but I can't find the file. And you don't even have to know what that data said. It'll be able to go back and find it for you. And here, what they're showing is... They're typing a description, and then it's coming back with pictures. Google has stuff that can do this now, where you open up your phone and you save to gallery. Going forward, you'll be able to type in the kinds of things you're looking for, like my graduation. And it will recognize you, and it will recognize pictures of your graduation, and it will show you pictures of your graduation. And you don't have to go in and tag it or organize it into folders or make it galleries or pic or, or photo galleries it will just know because it's looked at your pictures and made notes and that's what we're talking about here your windows pc will be able to do that too this is very much kind of a a sleight of hand what they're doing is they're showing sketching in the background and then they're using ai to kind of make it appear better and this is something, this is kind of a parlor trick that they've been doing with AI for a while. There are lots of websites out there where you can go and you can trace stuff with a pencil. Or not a pencil, your mouse cursor, but it's that it uses a pencil tool on the screen. You can draw this rudimentary picture of a cat, and then you can click the generate button and it'll go, and then there's a picture of an actual cat because it recognizes your doodle as such and it substitutes it in. This is doing the same thing now, except you instead of being a special website that you do it with, it'll be with Microsoft Paint. You'll be able to sit there and you can have zero artistic ability, but as long as it can figure out what you're trying to draw, it will have a variable weight to it. It, it can take what you're doing and change the fidelity. Let's jump to here. Here we see the slider. The creativity level, level, the bottom is where you start, you raise it up, and you increase the quality. 
like like that. Now, I don't know how true to fidelity that will be, but I can tell you that AI can do things like that now. I don't know what that will look like on the PC, but this is a thing that can be done. So, you know, there they may be there may be a little hyperbole, but basically this is a thing that can happen now and that will happen later. And this right here is the holy grail. What they're basically saying is that the AI that you'll have on your computer will be able to live translate. In other words, I'm speaking English and I'm talking to someone who only speaks Russian. They'll be able to watch this stream on their computer and have it live translates to Russian. Now, something... <clears throat> I don't know how this is going to work. Um, I don't know if they're talking about just text, but the power exists that we can do voice too. Like, um, if I were willing to pay for it, I could go into a commercial service and upload my video and tell it I need to speak Portuguese. And it will take my mouth and make it look like I'm speaking Portuguese and take my voice and use my infliction and I will be speaking Portuguese in that output video. <laughs> 